Welcome to the Hour of Empowerment. Today we are in Season 1, Personal Development, Topic 3, Living Each Day with a Sense of Urgency. And we are in Episode 4, Interview. As you remember, we have been discussing about the importance of sense of urgency, how we should invest our time, energy, and resources onto our passion and mission. Today we have a guest here in our studio, Rob Brown, who is a lawyer and the founder of the Writer's Silo. Rob, thank you very much for coming by taking your precious time to discuss about the importance of sense of urgency. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm really happy to be here today. Let's begin our discussion about you. Let's, let's talk about uh, your background and about the Writer's Silo and other projects you are doing right now. Oh, well, thank you so much. Um, I am a native Washingtonian. I'm born and raised in Washington, D.C., pretty much uh, raised in the Maryland area as well. Um, did my undergraduate studies at Michigan State University. Um, finished law school in the Midwest as well. Um, I practiced law um, from about 2002 to about 2009. Um, transitioned my career into staffing and aid discovery, and then further transitioned my career into the financial services industry. Um, but right now, what I'm focusing my efforts on is my project called the Writer Silo. Now, the Writer Silo is an online website that's going to train uh, and inspire authors who want to self-publish their books and want to profit from their efforts. I know that uh, you have been doing a lot of things at the same time. How do you manage to do these things at the same time? You must be in sense of urgency every day. So tell us about when you began this kind of lifestyle and whether that transition was smooth or challenging. Well, I, I think that I can trace back um, living my life with a sense of urgency to when I was in law school. Um, any first year law student will tell you that the overwhelming amount of work reading preparation um, that they have to do in order to be prepared for class, prepared for the very challenging professors um, that are going to uh, basically ask you a lot of questions every day um, that are pretty tough. Um, you know, you really have to be prepared. So that kind of fostered my sense of urgency. And then I was in the first year of law school. In the second year of law school, it's even more challenging because you have more on your plate you're juggling more duties, more responsibilities. Um, so that further hones um, your sense of urgency. Um, and yes, it was quite a transition because I had never been challenged academically like that uh, before in my life. Um, so I realized that to quote unquote step up my game. Um, and that's when I started to live my life with a sense of urgency. How do you manage your time? Do you use some tools and applications? I do. Um, I'm a big proponent of using technology um, to, to manage my time to maintain that, that sense of urgency. Um, I'm a big proponent of uh, using Outlook calendars, um, tracing my time. Um, I'm the type of person where if I have an appointment, let's say at 12 o'clock, I'll kind of trace back and say, okay, the appointment that I have to be at is at 12 o'clock. How long is it going to take to drive there? It'll take an hour to drive. So I will literally put drive time into my calendar. And I'll trace back from drive time, okay, at 11, between 11 and 10, I need to be showering, shaving, getting ready. From 10 to 9, I need to be working out at the gym. From 9 to 8, I need to be eating breakfast and preparing for my day. So I kind of see what I need to do during the day, and I trace back. Um, I'm a big proponent of using technology uh, iPhones. Um, I use my iPhone to uh, record um, different bits of information. Um, if there's something that you know I need to record, if there's um, a phone number I need to record, instead of taking the time to write it down on pen and paper, normally what I'll do is I will dictate it into my iPhone. You know, those types of things save you time during the course of the day. If there's um, something that I see, let's say on the street, like a sign, or let's say there's something that I want to record, instead of writing it down, I'll take my iPhone and take a picture of it. 
Okay, and then I can go back to it. Those little time savers, you know, are, are really good with regards to managing your time. So I'm a big proponent of using technology to help you manage your day. I have met you a couple of times and I found you that you are passionate and always energetic. How do you generate and maintain energy on a consistent basis? I think um, I just have a clear sense of what my goals are, what my aspirations are. Um, and I don't let myself get mired down in a lot of details um, that can kind of distract me from you know, my overall goals and aspirations. Um, now, don't get me wrong, I am detail oriented, uh, but from time to time, you have to take a step back, kind of levitate to the 30,000 foot view, look at what you want to achieve, look at your goals, and then go back down to the surface, surface and say, okay, I see why I'm doing these different things throughout the day because I've refocused myself on my goal and when I'm able to kind of take a, a 30,000 foot view and take a step back and look and kind of reiterate what I want to achieve I'm able to energize myself and keep my energy levels up. How oh, interesting. Uh, the next question is about how do we align what we do with our passion create energy and enter into a sense of urgency on a daily basis? Well, it's tough. Um, I think that um, in order to align your passions, you really have to, once again, take a self-assessment. Um, I think a lot of people have never really taken a step back and said, what do I want to do with my life? What do I want to achieve with my life? Um, I like to, uh, at the beginning of each year, a lot of people like to um, do New Year's resolutions at the beginning of each year. I don't necessarily do a New Year's resolution, but I will take a step back and say, okay, Rob, what do you want to achieve at the beginning of this year? You know, at the beginning of the year, what do I want to achieve for this year? You know, let me take a look back at what I did last year. How can I improve on those things so that I can propel myself in the new year? Um, I recently did that um, here in 2014. Kind of took a step back um, and just looked and said, okay, Rob, this is what you achieved in 2013. Does that align with what you want to achieve in 2014? Do you need to make some tweaks? Do you need to make some adjustments? I think when you really take a self-assessment, you can align your passions and you can maintain that sense of urgency. One challenge I have seen is that you know people, they have a passion about doing something, but what they do in their job and also in their business is different than their passion. So how can they really find ways to express their passion because what they do at their job and in their business doesn't align with their passion? That's, that's, an, that's an excellent question. Um, I think, um, you know, time management comes in. Um, you know, a lot of times you'll have a job, and like you say, it's completely different from what your passion is. And, you know, we all need to make a living. So yeah. I completely understand and respect the fact that people sometimes are doing something that they're not passionate about. But... You know, I'm a proponent of the fact that we're all given the same amount of time in a week. Yeah. We're all given 168 hours during the week. It depends on how you want to spend your 168 hours. So I think in order to, you know, pursue your passions, even though it may not be exactly what you're doing for your full-time job, you really need to assess how you're spending your time. Um, you know, if, you, if people would keep a time log, you know, and track everything that they're doing every day just for a week, and see like where they're spending their time at, they're gonna see that there's a lot of things that they're doing throughout the course of the day that they can eliminate. And that's gonna give them the time and the opportunity to achieve their passions above and beyond what they're doing for their daily jobs. Let's talk about uh, the book, Sense of Urgency. The author of uh, Sense of Urgency, John Coder, he talks about the importance of leaders showing sense of urgency to bring change in their organization. So what individuals and organizations can do using sense of urgency to bring change in their organization and in their personal life? Um, I think uh, transparency um, and clarity uh, play a role in that. Um, when a leader of an organization has that sense of urgency, but they want to convey that sense of urgency to the people that are in the organization, there has to be clarity of purpose. OK, they have to be clear in what their vision is for the organization and what each particular person in that organization is going to do in order to achieve that vision. So there has to be clarity and there has to be transparency. Um, a lot of times a person can convey their vision um, for an organization with a sense of urgency 
and they're clear, but it's not necessarily transparent. People are like, well, I don't, I heard him, but I didn't really understand him. I heard her, didn't really understand her. There has to be transparency. There has to be clarity. Once there's clarity and transparency, people can have a better sense of the organizational leader's sense of urgency, and then they can internalize it, and it'll give them the energy and the motivation to move on. Some people, without knowing, uh, they uh, hurt their health, performance, and relationships by entering into unhealthy sense of urgency. I call it pseudo sense of urgency. How can we prevent ourselves from entering into a pseudo sense of urgency? I think there needs to be um, clarity with regards to what's urgent and what's important. Um, and people need to see the distinction between the two. Um, something can be urgent but not important and then you can have things that are important and not urgent. Let's say, for instance, um, if a person has, let's say, an exercise regimen um, that's important to them, they want to get in 30 minutes of exercise a day. You know, that's important. But on a given day, let's say they get a phone call from a friend that says, you know, I'm stranded on the side of the road, my car broke down, can you come get me, can you come help me out? Now the person that's on the exercise regimen may say, no, it's I have to exercise, I'll try to get someone else to help you, you know, I can't help you right now. That's a pseudo sense of urgency. It's urgent for them to help their friend who's stranded on the side of the road. At that particular moment, it's not urgent for them to maintain that exercise regimen. So what people need to do is they need to be able to make the distinction between something that's urgent and something that it's important. And sometimes they can be distinct. You're right. In one of our episodes, I talked about the importance of using Stephen Covey's quadrants. In that quadrant, he talked about how much the majority of the people uses the urgent but not important things. But those highly successful uh, leaders and uh, successful business people, they, are, they invest on quadrant two, which is not ur urgent but important. Have you heard about this quadrant? Do you want I've to not heard about that. Okay. I've not okay. heard about that. But it, it definitely makes sense. It, yeah, it, it agrees sense. with what you said because the, the, the problem is the majority of us, we invest on those things that are not important but maybe urgent. But those successful people, they invest on those things like preparation, strategizing, thinking, reading, relationship building, and so on. But the majority of us, we invest on those that are urgent but not important. Exactly. Yeah, that's uh, the problem. So uh, do you have some people uh, you know who lived with a sense of urgency or still living with a sense of urgency, people you admire? Well, people from history, you know, Dr. Martin Luther King, um, Abraham Lincoln, um, you know, those types of leaders, Nelson Mandela, world leaders that realized that there was a greater sense um, that they owed uh, to their fellow man and their fellow woman. Um, they lived their lives with a sense of urgency. Um, even today, I look at some of the leaders, you know, in the business community, uh, Meg Whitman, who's the CEO of Hewlett Packard. Um, I'm a sports guy, so I look at someone like Peyton Manning, who's, you know, in the twilight of his career, um, is on the eve of his third Super Bowl. You know, obviously, he's living right now with a sense of urgency because this is probably the last time that he's going to be in the Super Bowl. Um, you know, and people that I work with on a daily basis, um, you know, my small business coach, Glenn Garns, um, one of my colleagues, uh, Brandon Gully, who does financial services with me. Um, these are the people that I look at and I study, you know, their sense of urgency and how they are approaching their goals and their aspirations. And it's a lot to learn and it's a lot to internalize. I, in one of our episodes, I talked about Steve Jobs. And he's one of the people I admire who entered into a sense of urgency. And some of these great individuals, like you mentioned, Gandhi, Martin Luther King Jr., and Steve Jobs, they live as if today is their last day. What does that mean? I mean, living each day was as if it is your last day. I think when you live um, every day as if it's your last day, um, you have a sense of courage that's probably not going to be there if you don't have the sense that today is your last day. And when a person has courage, you know, they're able to step out and do a lot of things that they previously thought that they couldn't achieve. 
Um, and I think that's probably the distinction. Let's say someone would like to live uh, a kind of lifestyle we are talking about, living each day with a sense of urgency. What kind of advices or suggestions would you give to him or her? I think the first thing that a person can do is, you know, sit down and either write or type out, if they have a laptop, whatever works for them, write out three to five goals, three to five things that they want to achieve. That could be, you know, maybe they want to run in a marathon or they want to start a business or they want to um, spend more time with their family or, you know, if they're a student, maybe get a higher GPA. You know, write down three or four, maybe five of their goals. Um, that's the first thing that they should do. The second thing that they should do is they should, uh, and I think I mentioned earlier, keep a time log um, of everything that they do for one week. You know, account for those 168 hours during that week. Then the following week, look at that, that time log and see how they spent their time. You know, did I need to do this? Did I need to do that? Was this absolutely necessary? And take all of those things that, you know, were frivolous, um, that weren't very important, and really make a concerted effort uh, to eliminate those activities and that's going to free up a lot of their time then once they have that free time what they can do is they can revisit those three to five goals and say okay now that I have um, you know kind of cleaned up my calendar cleaned up my schedule and I'm no longer going to be engaging in those activities um, that are basically wasting my time now I have time to really put in those three to five goals and start achieving those goals. I think that's, that's a great way to start living with a sense of urgency. And once you have clear time in order to achieve your goals, you start getting closer to your goals. And the closer you get, the le your level of urgency is going to rise because you're gonna see how close you're getting yeah. to your goals. Mahatma Gandhi said that uh, live each day as if this is your last day, but learn as if you live forever. The question is, yes, we need to live with a sense of urgency. But at the same time, we need also to keep the balance. You know, we should learn, we should uh, serve, we should love, we should relate with other people. So how can we keep the balance? Uh, I think a lot of self-reflection. Um, I think in order to keep that type of balance, you know, you really need to realize that, you know, you have a greater sense of duty, you know, to your fellow man. You have a greater sense of duty to your fellow woman to be the best that you can be, you know, to achieve greatness in your own sense, not for yourself, but for, you know, the greater whole of the people yeah. that you're around, you know, and when you can balance that and when you can say, the reason why I want to achieve these certain goals is not so much for myself, but for the people around me that I love and for the greater cause of humanity, you know, I think that's how you can strike the balance. I think that's how you can carry on. Is there anything you want to say to our audience? Any advice or any last minute suggestions? Well, I, I think for everyone who's watching, um, you can live your life with a greater sense of urgency. You know, you have the God-given right and the God-given talent, you know, to live your life with a greater sense of purpose. And each person is different, you know, and I implore you to, you know, use technology in order to achieve your goals. I implore you to really practice good time management schools, skills and I implore you also to really be true to yourself. And, and once you are able to mix these things and able to practice them on a daily basis, your sense of urgency is gonna rise and you're gonna be able to achieve your goals for yourself, for your family, for your loved ones, and for the greater good of all humankind. Thank you very much, Ralph, for coming and sharing your great ideas. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. I look it. forward to talk to you in the future. Absolutely, I look forward to being back. Our viewers, uh, I hope you have enjoyed our conversation. Today we have finished topic three from season one. Next week we're going to have a brand new season, which is civic education. Don't miss it. Until I see you next week, have a wonderful time. Thank you very much.